Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video, we're going to learn how to use Python's Natural Language Toolkit in LTK Library to analyze text and documents. And we're not going to cover sentiment analysis in this video. I'll save that for another video. Uh, but we are going to cover the NLTK corpus. I'll show you how to uh, download that and use it and access it. Uh, def dictionary definitions, punctuation and stop words, stemming and limitization, sentence and word tokenizers, parts of speech and tagging, um, the word to vec, and also doc to vec, and clustering and classifying. So the setup, you need to import NLTK. If you don't have the package already installed, then you can use pip, pip install NLTK to, to um, install that package. And then you can import NLTK, and then you have to run NLTK.download, and you only run this one time. It's going to open a dialog box. It'll show you a whole bunch of stuff that you can download. And that includes a whole bunch of different collections of corpuses that are part of the NLTK toolkit. And you can use those to do sample code with and to test out and, and learn how to use the, the NLTK tools. And the dialog box is going to look like this. And you can basically say, yeah, I want to download all this. It's going to install the entire corpora, all these sets of text documents, which are called uh, corpuses. Uh, and the plural of that is corpora. So it's going to install all these on your computer. And you're going to have access to existing corpora so that you can start doing uh, some programming and testing on these existing text documents. So there's a lot of different stuff. But anyway, just install all this. You can uninstall it later if you feel like it takes up too much space on your hard drive. So, but it's a single click to install all this. Uh, then, And you can see here what all is included in the NLTK corpus. It's, uh, there's a lot of different ones. And some of the ones that we're going to play with in this video are the Gutenberg text selections, also WordNet, and we're also going to use synonyms um, and stop words, things like that. There's a lot of different other stuff in this corpus that you can look at, including foreign language uh, corpuses and stuff like that. So you're just going to do this download one time. It's the first time you open it, and you're going to run this. And after that, after you get it installed, we can start writing some code. So we're going to do import NLTK, and then from NLTK.book, import star. And this is going to import the whole collection of books. And um, the books are text1, text2, text3, and so on. So let's look at the type of text1. What object type is it? Well, it's an NLTK.text object. And then we're going to look at the length of it. How long is it? This is how many words. It's 260,000 words. And we can um, make a set so that we can see how many unique words there are. There are 19,000 unique words. The first 10 words of text 1 tell us a little bit about what book it is. It's Moby Dick by Herman Melville. And text 2, the first 10 words, Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. So we're going to use these a little bit in this video. Now for this next example, we're going to import the Gutenberg corpus. So we do from nltk.corpus import Gutenberg. And then we can print Gutenberg's file IDs, which shows us this list of file IDs for all of the texts that are included in the Gutenberg corpus. And Hamlet is one of those. So to get one of those texts for usage, we can, we can just say Gutenberg.words, and that will basically make a list of this text and pass it to Hamlet. So Hamlet is now a list of words. So when we print the length of Hamlet, wow, it's 37,000 words. And if we want sentences, we can say gutenberg.sense, S-E-N-T-S, is the word to get sentences. And then we can see how many sentences there are. There are 3,100 sentences, 3,106. And just print out a sample sentence, um, Hamlet underscore sentences. And then this is, again, this is just a list. You can just pass in an index, and it will, it will print out that sentence. What say you? And notice here that punctuation is included as a word. And if we want paragraphs, we can do P-A-R-A-S. So these are three key functions, words, sense, and paragraphs, paras, that are used in, in LTK. So we get the paragraphs, and there are 950 paragraphs in this text. Now, if you want to get the count of a word in a document, a single word, let's say we want to find out how many times the word horse appears in, gosh, what was uh, text one? Moby Dick. You want to find out how many times the word horse appears in Moby Dick. Um, 26. This is just the text.count. 
and it flips through the list, counts up how many times it finds horse. And then if you want to find um, the context that a single word is used, this will show you the context, plus and minus five words of where that word is used in, uh, in the text. So here we picked the word passion. And I'm showing it in text one and text two so that you can see the context differences between how a word is used between two different texts. So here we have a book by Melville where he uses passion in different ways than Austin does. So you can see the context of a word using concordance. Frequency distribution. If you want to count how many times each word in a text is used, then we can use freakdist, and that will give us the frequency distribution for, or basically the count of each word in the, each text. So in text one, here I just printed out the first 20, most common 20, but the, uh, the word the appears 13,721 times. A period appears 68, 62 times, and so on. So we can see what the most common words are and what the frequency distribution is of each word in the entire text. And so you can see the vocabulary, which is the first item, the vocabulary. There are 19,000 unique words. Normally, though, when you're analyzing a text, you don't care about the punctuation. And you don't care about a lot of these words like and, a, to. Those might be the most popular words used in a text, but they're not the most important words in the text because they're used commonly in all texts, so it doesn't differentiate this text from any other text. One way to filter those out is to pick out longer words. So here we did a sort function on this frequency distribution, sorting descending by the count of the word, and then we're just getting the most common 80 words. And we're only picking out ones that are greater than three characters, so four or more characters. And we can see here that that, with, this, still a lot of common words, uh, but look, whale, 906 times. So that's more telling about the actual text. When you have words like whale, it tells you something about the meaning of the text, or Ahab, which is a name. We can also use a dispersion plot to show us where in a document and how frequently in a document a single word is used, or a list of words. Here we put a list of words. I put five words in this list. And we can see how often those five words are used and where they're used throughout the text. So the entire corpus has a little over 250,000 words. And we can see that, wow, the word whale is used a lot throughout the entire text. And the word capture is not used so much, only a handful of times. But look, life and death are used pretty frequently and kill a little bit. So you can look at a specific select list of words and put them on a dispersion plot to see how frequently and where they occur in the text. Dictionary definitions are really easy to get from NLTK. So we're going to import WordNet as WN, and then we're going to use WN.SYN sets. These are synonym sets. And here we passed in a word. Wow, we're interested in the word unmitigated. And we pass in a zero here because that indicates the part of speech. So a lot of times, words may have multiple parts of speech. There may be a noun definition, or there may be a, an adjective definition or a verb definition. Here we're just going to take the first one, and we're going to print the name of the word and then the definition of the word. And then we're also going to print examples of, it use, of its usage. So unmitigated is not diminished or moderated in intensity or severity, sometimes used as an intensifier. OK, cool. And Examples, wow, look, unmitigated suffering and unmitigated horror and unmitigated lie. So these are just examples of phrases of how the word is used. So let's look at punctuation and stop words.